Thank you for having me as part of your virtual Writers and Schools Festival. My name is Mikhail Mulipola. I am a Samoan professional comic book illustrator, professional wrestler, and international Tekken player. I was born and raised in Maangere, South Auckland, and I've always loved comic books since I was a little kid. But we'll get into that once I start answering your questions. So let's get into it. What inspired me to be an artist? Well, funnily enough, as a little kid, uh, I stumbled across my uncle's stash of comic books. It was all kinds of comics. It was like X-Men, it was Marvel, Rob the Space Knight, 2000 ADs. And as a little kid, um, those comics really changed the way I saw the world. It really sparked my imagination. Uh, so yeah, so comic books itself really inspired me to become an artist because I absolutely loved the bold characters and the beautiful colors, bright costumes. Um, just everything about comics really captured my imagination as a little kid. Why did I choose to draw? Well, when you're a little kid, around two, three years old, everyone, everyone loves to draw. Whether you're good at it or not, it's just this thing that we all do as, as kids. So when I discovered my uncle's comics around that age, I was inspired. I wanted to be a part of those four color worlds inside the comic book. So because I liked to draw as a kid, just seeing those comics made me think I can do that. I want to do that. And so that's why I chose to draw because the comics the world of comics really i wanted to be a part of um and luckily for me now as an adult i get to create comics as a job uh, as a career so uh it's pretty crazy i must say why is a particular story important to me well even though i'm an illustrator um and i draw comic books I'm still telling a story. I find I consider myself a storyteller um, because through my artwork and comic books and the comic book medium, I am telling a story. And so story is very integral to what I do as an artist. And so connections to characters, um, to feelings um, is very important to me. Whenever I'm drawing characters, I'm making sure that um, my audience can feel what those characters um, are, are going through in that moment through my artwork, through their facial expressions, through the body language, um, and then, you know, coupled with the speech. Um, so, yeah, so whenever I'm drawing a comic book, I'm thinking about, um, I think of it like I'm a director, so I think of it like a director. I'm shooting a scene, and I'm figuring out which is the best shot for that particular moment. And I'm thinking about how the actors in the scene are supposed to be uh, feeling and their behavior and all of that. And the lighting um, all come together, culminate into this visual image, which creates a story moment. And like, I've been very lucky, like as a professional wrestler and as a comic book artist, I've been able to illustrate uh, graphic novels like for Headlocked and uh, comic books for the WWE. And because I'm illustrating wrestling stories, my experience as a wrestling uh, as a pro wrestler allows me to illustrate some of the moments I've lived through uh, in my training to be who I am. And so it's not like a fan of wrestling illustrating the stories. It's actually a wrestler who's lived these moments. And so I actually go uh, go into my own experience and put it out onto the page in these comic book forms. And recently, uh, one of the stories that I've really enjoyed doing um, is this Samoan language comic called Oliainga Samoa. And what's great about it is that we get to illustrate, um, I get to illustrate a comic based on uh, Samoan culture, uh, Samoan family, Samoan values, entirely in the Samoan language. Even though there's an English version, there uh, first is released in Samoan language. And I really love working on that. Um, 
because as a proud Psalm 1, um, I get to showcase what a Psalm 1, the Psalm 1 language can do and what a Psalm 1 artist can do. And in doing so, like creating the family, it's a very modern um, Psalm 1 family. Um, I look to people I know, look to people I've seen, uh, and kind of brought my own experiences uh, as a Psalm 1 person in New Zealand um, to that story. So, um, so it's, it's little connections like that, you know, with, with story, when you're creating a story, you know, you want people to relate to the characters. And so having authentic, um, depictions of characters means that the connection with the audience is that more sincere. Um, people can tell when you're faking, uh, when you're faking representation or you're faking a characteristic of, of a character. Um, so yeah, so if, if you attack your story and your characters, um, with truth, then the connection is much deeper. And that's what I love about comics. Uh, and what I do is that, um, my purpose is to connect with my audience through the visual medium. And, uh, and I, I spend a lot of time crafting that to make sure that the reader is, uh, is connected to the characters I illustrate. Were there any weirdo challenges uh, for me while I'm drawing and how do I overcome them? So here's the thing, right? Uh, illustrating and drawing is hard. It's damn hard. And, um, and unfortunately there's no shortcuts. There's no magic tricks in how to be a better artist. Uh, all you have to do is do the work. And so it's a constant grind. Um, it's constant work. Uh, constantly crafting and honing your skills um, to the point when you're content with your work. <laughs> um, and, and it's a constant struggle. And I tell people, it's like, the more you draw, the easier it gets. It's just never easy. Um, because for me, every image, every comic is a problem. And I have to figure out ways to solve that problem. Creativity to me is just problem solving. Um, and so for me, I'm finding new ways to expand my skills, expand my horizons to try and conquer these problems that always come to me with every project I work on. Um, but despite all the troubles and all the, the determination and and the effort and the hard work put into becoming a better artist, I still get to draw. And that's the coolest thing. That's what really kind of gets me going, keeps me going is that I get to draw every single day and get paid for it. And, uh, and that's the best feeling ever. And, you know, I do have my, my days where I don't feel like drawing, where I've, where I've had enough and I just want to have a break. Um, but again, I get to draw and get paid for it. So those feelings don't really last long because I understand that I'm very fortunate to be able to living, to be able to live the dream that I had as a kid now as an adult. Um, and in terms of overcoming, uh, these obstacles and, uh, and solving these problems, um, I love making mistakes. And the reason why I love making mistakes is because every, every failure that I've had as an artist, is another opportunity to learn and everything is practice. So every time I draw something, I'm not like, I'm not like, this is the perfect picture. Um, this is the best I can do. I always know that every time I complete something that I still have much more to work on. And so whenever I work on the next project, I try and be better than I was before. And so every time I create something, it's just a constant gradual progression at being a better artist. And so I, understanding that, knowing that it's okay to make mistakes uh, and that it's good to make mistakes um, and that you can learn from them makes you a better artist or writer or whatever it is you want to do. So understanding that failure doesn't mean the end. It means another opportunity to learn. For me, because uh, I illustrate a lot uh, and I've, I've had done so much work over the years, for me, it's finished not perfect. And with an artist, 
we're constantly striving for that perfect image. Understanding that deep down, we will never get there, but it never stops us from trying. Um, so yeah, so for me, it's just knowing that even if I do wrong as an artist, I can always fix it later on in terms of learning from it, growing from it. Um, so having that mindset allows you to overcome a lot of those obstacles and understanding that each mistake you can learn from means that each time I step forward, um, when I'm learning, when I make a mistake, it's always small. It's always small. Um, if you let those mistakes build up without, uh, without attacking them and trying to work to better yourself on those, then that mis small mistake becomes a big mistake. And that, that leap that you take to try and fix it is even more daunting. So take all those small challenges and overcome them before they become big challenges. When did I first begin to draw? Well, since I could pick up a pen and paper, really. Um, you know, one, two years old, and I've kind of been drawing ever since. Um, you know, I just didn't stop. That's the thing. And so um, that's, with, that's how long I've always been drawing. In terms of making comics, and I made comics in primary school um, and whatnot, but I never really kept them. I never really cared for them because, as I said, um, everything is practice. And to be honest, I hate everything I draw um, because, again, I see all the mistakes I've made. I see all the failures. And so I try and be better than I was the day before. And so I never really care for what I've done in the past. You know, I am, I'm proud of some projects, but my artwork in them, I was like, oh, I could do better than that. Um, but for me, it's just a constant cycle of, um, of trial and error, trial and error um progression slight progression um so yeah so I, yeah so i can't remember when my first comic is it's definitely in primary school but to be honest it was rubbish um so i don't care <laughs> um yeah so uh yeah so i've been drawing since forever really uh since i can even remember <laughs> How did I feel when I uh, published my first book uh, or I had my first graphic novel published? Um, I, I remember it too. So the first headlocked graphic novel um, was released in 2014, San Diego. Um, and I had spent a good part of three, four, five months illustrating the whole book. So I was illustrating 115 comic pages for this graphic novel, Headlock. And Michael Kingston, who's the writer and uh, creator of Headlock, I met him in 2011 at San Diego Comic-Con. And we became good friends and he wanted me to illustrate his next book, uh, Headlock, because he loved my artwork, as well as me being a pro wrestler. And so after four or five months, just knuckling down getting that book finished um i went to san diego comic-con in 2014 and when i got there i met mike at the hotel and he handed me a copy of headlock and i remember holding it too because i was like oh damn this is my work like it was surreal you know all those years of just drawing and dreaming of that moment culminated into this 115 page book in my hands uh and it was surreal especially at san diego comic-con so um so yeah so i'll always remember that like uh, that's when you that's when i realized i had made it or well, i made it in some sense um that it wasn't just a dream it is now reality so uh that was amazing i absolutely loved that uh, another great thing as well was uh, when I did my first comic story for the WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment Comics. Uh, it was a short story written by uh, my friend Michael Kingston and also Samoa Joe, who's a WWE superstar. And Samoa Joe is a big comic book fan. And so naturally he's the fan of mine because a Samoan comic illustrator to him is the coolest thing. And so when WWE asked uh, Samoa Joe to write a story for their comics, 
he asked me to illustrate. Um, so I was really excited and I absolutely loved drawing the story. And um, the coolest thing about it was that I got to draw Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns. And so you had a Samoan writer, Samoan artist, illustrating Samoan on Samoan violence. Um, and so it was, was the rarest of Pokemon um, in the comic book industry. So uh, Boom Studios, who were uh, publishing these comics, sent me my physical copies of the book. And one thing I wasn't expecting uh, when I got that first copy of my book, of my WWE comic work, was to see my last name on the cover. So the third name from the top on the cover of this comic was Munipola. And uh, that was surreal too, because I didn't expect to get emotional, but as I was holding that comic and I saw Munipola on the cover, in the comic that was released in all the comic stores around the world, it made me think about my grandparents and the sacrifices they made to move from Samoa to New Zealand to create a better uh, life and opportunities for their next generations. Um, so yeah, so that was amazing to have that moment and understand that through my comic work, I was representing my family um, and representing my grandparents. So that was really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, in terms of my most recent uh, comic, like uh, hasn't necessarily been published, it's been put online. And that's the Ole, uh, Ole Ainga Samoa comic, the Samoan language comic. And I'm just very proud to have been a part of that. Um, illustrating our experiences and our language as Samoan people and having people really connect with the story we're telling, with the characters we've created, with my artwork. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's an immense, uh, there's immense pride in having your work enjoyed the way you hoped it would be. Because truth be told, as an artist, once you put your work out into the world, it is no longer within your power how people react to it um so yeah so to have people kind of really uh kind of connect with the story we're telling and the characters we've created uh means a lot it means that we're doing something new. what is my favorite series of books well i don't read traditional books i read comic books as you can see in the background um and a series of books, uh, I would say, you know, as a kid, I loved X-Men. Um, they definitely, um, that comic series really resonated with me as a young kid, the artwork and all those cool characters. Um, in terms of uh, storylines, um, Jeff Johns' Green Lantern run is amazing, uh, culminating in The Blackest Night, which was this massive... Um, kind of event and it was amazing um some of my favorite uh comic work uh to date um i also love into the spy uh, not into the spider verse spider verse which is what the movie is based on uh spider-man into the spider verse and i loved that because as a, as a kid i loved spider-man but i never realized how much i loved spider-man until reading spider verse because it had thousands and thousands of different spider people coming together and I remember going hey that's that spider-man there's this spider person spider woman from here spider blah 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 and that's when I realized how much I love spider-man um so yeah so it was, it was a very it was very cool um to kind of understand that I love spider-man uh in terms of books and stuff like and you know, as a kid I I loved reading um not only comics but like you know other books and I loved archaeology and mythology so I was reading like uh, dinosaur books. So I was reading you know, mythology books and uh, archaeological books. But then I also loved sci-fi and, and fantasy and fiction um, and stuff. So like uh, I read like some Lord of the Rings and like uh, the, the Narnia Chronicles, uh, Chronicles of Narnia um, series of books um, I mean, I was a kid. Um, but yeah, I don't really read uh traditional books i'm usually reading comic books and unfortunately i haven't been reading as many as comic books as i'd like because i'm too busy making comic books so that's that's the thing that sucks if you're too busy making comics you can't read comics um but it is what it is how 
how do I come up with my ideas? Well, that's a, that's an interesting um, question because ideas come from anywhere and everywhere. Um, you know, I can get some really great stories when I'm wrestling. I'll get some, some ideas uh, while playing video games. I get ideas when I'm on the bus or uh, in, the, in the train, uh, walking around, uh, shopping, visiting schools. Yeah, ideas uh, pop up anywhere and everywhere. And you know, for me, sometimes I have super silly ideas. And sometimes my super silly ideas are my best ideas. Um, and as an artist, sometimes I have to entertain those ideas. Um, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just really interesting i can never tell where my ideas come from uh until they come like they just hit you um and like you know some of the interesting I ideas i've come up with like when i was in new york and i was in the subway um i wanted to draw but i didn't want to draw people uh or draw people's faces because you know i'm in new york and if i'm staring intently at someone's face they might stab me so um so i thought oh it, what can I draw without making it look creepy? Uh, so I started drawing people's shoes and that was fun. I was drawing all kinds of shoes, like looking down, drawing people's shoes in the crowded subway in New York um, and stuff like that. So yeah, that was, the, that was an idea that just came out of nowhere and also out of self-preservation. Um, you know, sometimes you just go out there and you draw what you see, you know, observational sketches will bring up ideas. Um, sometimes you come up with a silly joke and you, you have no choice but to draw it um, just to get out of your, your head. That, and that happens to me a lot. Um, but yeah, it's uh, ideas come from anywhere and everywhere. And, um, you know, whether they're uh, close personal connections or just uh, passers by, you know. If I see someone on the, on the bus, I see someone out in the open that looks ugly, I go, oh, that's a really ugly face. That looks fun to draw. I'll draw that ugly face. So, uh, and incorporate it somewhere into my work. Um, yeah, which is why I draw a lot of school journals. Um, but yeah, no, ideas come from anywhere and everywhere. Um, personal and impersonal uh, experience, uh, and sometimes just through osmosis. Um, so yeah, so ideas that come from anywhere and everywhere. Sweet. So that answers all your questions. Thank you very much for sending them through. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you to ReadNZ for allowing me to speak to you today. Uh, until next time, don't forget to read more, draw more, and have fun. Uh, my name is Mikhail Munipola, professional comic book artist, professional wrestler, and Tekken player. And I'll catch you guys next time.